Hello everyone. There are so many head jokes you can make about No Guns Life, but we're not gonna do that. This fan service review is gonna be professional. So No Guns Life is an action noir anime. We don't get many of these. It's pretty good. It has nice sci-fi style and a few good-looking scenes. But unfortunately, it's overshadowed by recent bigger titles. This also reminds me of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, from the facial expression and how the characters will just pose for the camera. This anime heavily borrows influence from classic noir or detective movies. It even has the protagonist, Inui Juso, doing monologue about how somber his life or the case he's been working is. The main story follows him as he rescues a boy with mysterious power, Tetsuro. Then they are involved with mafia, big corporation, the police, and often hunted or arrested. There are some other cases as well on the first season. Some are drama-heavy, some are more action-oriented, there's even one straight from mystery novel. I like how each case reveals little details about the world, which is one of the anime's stronger points. This is a steampunk sci-fi with a lot of mafia tone. It's beautifully done on some episodes. The constant jazz melody and the opening are good in setting the atmosphere as well. However, it might take a while, since the pacing is rather slow. You'd see the usual monologue, not just from the villain, but the hero as well. They would lament together about some conspiracy or dark past, I guess this is the tone they're looking for. A lot of detective movies did this too. But since we have such quick presentation for anime today, it's easy to see No Guns Life falling out of favor with some viewers. The characters can fall into conventional anime cliches as well. Inui Juso is the hard-boiled detective. He has the stern look but golden heart. It's just that he seems always shrouded in mystery talking as fakely and behaving as the Tets as possible. Tetsuro as the other protagonist isn't much better. He's the usual, heroic to the point of breaking type. In almost every episode, Mary the engineer always says, don't use the ability too much. And not even 5 minutes, Tetsuro will use the ability too much. I understand they want to portray him overcoming his guilt, finding his purpose and all that, but it's overly done at this point. You'll see a lot of other eccentric characters in this sci-fi world, sometimes just for the sake of being gaudy. Here, people can replace their limbs or even entire body. When Botox isn't enough, just replace your entire head. I do like the design though. It might be excessive but certainly memorable. The overly somber or melodramatic tone isn't anything new in more adult anime. For example, like Black Lagoon or Cowboy Bebop. Also, they might want to set a narrative for season 2, so they need to keep the air of mystery going. Fair enough. And the good thing is, the female characters fare a bit better. Not because they wear these micro bikinis or show more skin. The women here are often portrayed as having the position of power. Olivier, the black-haired lady, is the director of police force. She has the authoritative air about her in basically every scene she's in. Pepper, one of the main antagonists, can literally control her companion. She even has a trigger artificially built into her body. But out of the ladies, I like Mary, the blonde engineer the most. She is not depicted like others, but she is the more reasonable and mature one of the cast. She still has appeal, but the anime doesn't use her much as fan service. And let's be honest, these are definitely fan service. Sometimes they would do poses to the camera, asserting dominance, it's really on the nose, and the anime doesn't shy away from it. I suppose it's playing to its strength. While the animation here isn't too shabby, sometimes it lacks fluidity on certain scenes. However, you can pause a scene and it would look good. The steel frame is polished, and obviously, they want to make the best out of it, even if that means using questionable camera angle for the ladies. This sadly affects the fight scene as well. There are a couple of good ones, especially later on in the season, but some of the earlier ones feel a bit rigid. Honestly, it would be a long shot for the anime to compete with other big titles, as pretty as some of the scenes might be. No Guns Life is aimed at a niche audience, slower mystery detective story with a bit of action sprinkled on top. And it did a pretty fine job at that. It's perfectly presentable and slowly improving, so there's considerable hope for season 2. 
That's it. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and comment. Consider subscribing and share with your friends. I make three videos every week. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one.